Your friends are scrolling through short content, but you, my friend, you're here to learn. Welcome to the RS Clips. I think joy is a great place to begin a neuroscience conversation. Happiness, joy, yeah. success. Yeah. I actually think success is an overhyped word, and Absolutely. it's much more about the daily joy and happiness you feel. Absolutely. Uh, which is why I want to ask you. about stable relationships now this could mm-hmm. even be stable friendships that you've mm-hmm. maintained throughout your life mm-hmm. are there neural patterns that are formed because of a steady romantic partner or a steady friend group like when you're growing up and growing old with the same boys or girls that you were with in school or college mm-hmm. does that does that kind of a brain structure become a happier brain structure if those same neurons are firing okay so uh this is a very interesting question and you have to understand that apart from neurons there's also what is called neurochemistry so we have a whole lot of chemicals in the brain neurotransmitters neurochemicals and they are responsible for a lot of what you're talking about so you know when you're in a new relationship okay there is a certain set of neurochemicals that are stim- you know that are created which lead to you know the excitement the thrill of a new relationship and these by uh, and these are well defined you know they're actually well defined so in fact love has been completely explained through neurochemistry you know it's it's a fairly long thing and i wouldn't want to go into the details but there's a set of chemicals that is responsible for the initial excitement and thrill of a relationship now this naturally tapers off you know it cannot sustain and it's then dopamine systems now the next is so the dopamine and oxytocin the these the, these there are some hormones which are responsible for long term relationships where there is warmth and companionship and and friendship and togetherness so there are two sets of neurotransmitters those responsible for the initial excitement and those responsible for sustenance now what what happens is where you know we expect the say you know when you when you when a relationship or a friendship starts you expect that same excitement to continue forever it cannot the neurochemistry will not permit that so it's very important to shift into the more dopamine oxytocin the more warm caring type of friendship and relationship uh, because it's all got to do with the brain uh, so it's just understanding that what you start off with cannot last forever you have to bring that shift so this is all completely explained by neurochemistry okay uh so initially you're more dependent on dopamine and oxytocin to feel excited about your relationship and then later is it about serotonin yeah so it's it's actually a, it's a actually there are about 15 or 20 chemicals oh. you know they're all different chemicals okay. but i'm just to make it easy broadly i divided it into two okay the initial excitement and the sustenance the caring the warmth togetherness they are there are two separate sets when we understand that so once we just understand that that every relationship has to shift from one to the other for it to sustain long if you expect the initial to remain then the relationship will break down okay is there a difference in the structure of the brain or the working of the nervous system in someone who's been in a long term relationship no not in the structure but definitely in the neurochemistry so definitely they are happier people in general yeah absolutely okay that's the basic consensus yeah. so it's it's again it's a balance between okay so i'll explain to you the the brain itself there is what is called the higher brain that's the cerebral cortex that's the brain that's responsible for the thinking the logic that's the brain that uh, makes us human and then there is a a brain inside the uh, lower brain that is similar to the brains of animals for example right so if you take away our cerebral cortex our brain is very similar to that of a um, of a horse or a dog or a cat you know uh so we call it a hot brain and a cold brain you know the hot brain is the impulsive brain so you know hunger thirst sex uh, you know think you know anger all that comes from lower and there's a higher brain that tells you what is good bad right wrong what to do consequences and this a, a lot of unhappiness comes because the, there is a mismatch between what these two brains want okay uh, explain this more for example uh, you know it is good to wake up your higher brain will tell you it is good to wake up early and do do a morning walk and do yoga okay your lower brain will want you to sleep you know you understand uh, your you know so, so the lower brain is dependent we call it the hot brain and the cold brain the hot brain goes by instant gratification the higher brain thinks of the long term consequences 
animalistic lower brain versus yeah. humanized higher exactly, brain. Exactly, yeah. Now, these, so these are two brains. They're both our brains. They are both our brains. They are not different. But it's just that structurally, so humans have, see, we have evolved from lower animals. Okay. I mean, there were, life started, you know, there were fishes and then there were amphibians and then reptiles and then lo lower mammals and then us. So our brains have also evolved. Okay. We are the only ones to have a higher cerebral cortex. The only ones. The capacity to think, the capacity to plan ahead, you know, mm. the capacity to execute. That's with us. But this, the lower brain is still the same. It's the instinctive brain, you know. It's like, you know, you, for example, you know, you know, some junk food is not good for you. Your higher brain tells you it's not good. Your lower brain is hungry, wants to eat it, right? Mm. You may know that, you know, a particular form of tobacco is not good or, you know, uh, uh, you know some uh, a drink is not good or too much drink is not good. But at that time, you just want it. So it's this mismatch between the two. And now, different, you know, meditation, yoga and all that is supposed to give control of the higher brain over the lower brain. That's the whole purpose. I don't believe that one should do that. I think one what one needs is harmony. The lower brain is our brain as well. It's not a lower brain. It's actually situated lower. It's not actually a lower brain. But yes, it is very similar to the brains of animals. So one needs to, once you understand that you have these two, now you can bring about balance. You know, you can actually make judgments knowing what is controlling you. What is the call to action here for a college student who's thinking of their lower brain and higher brain? Is it to meditate? Uh, no, it is to have a... So again, I'm going to keep... You know, once you have a clear idea about what is it that you want to do, then your higher brain automatic... There's a balance between the two. Okay. So if you know that you have to study to do well in an exam. Now, doing well in your exam, I'm just using that as an example. If it is important enough your higher brain will automatically overrule the lower brain. When your lower brain wants to sleep more and your higher brain says, get up and study. Okay. If what the higher brain wants is important enough, it will automatically override the lower brain. So in other words, having something important in your life to do. I mean, if you, you can't, you know, it's difficult to, you know what, to, to, to raise, to raise kid, you can't tell them sit and meditate. Nobody wants mm. to meditate. Okay? Uh, there's a quote I read once that helped me a lot to oh. stay disciplined oh. through my fitness journey or my meditation journey or my uh -huh. business career. Mm -hmm. It's a simple quote that I think encapsulates yeah, yeah, exactly yeah, what yeah, you're saying, yeah, yeah. which is that, okay, the quote goes, discipline is choosing between what you want now oh. and what you want the most. Exactly. Very same true. thought? Absolutely same thought. So, and and there's, a, there's a neuroscience to it. What you want the most is the higher brain. What you want now is the lower brain. So there's a neuroscience to what you're saying. It's basically you reworking that same neural pathway. If you have a long-term goal, it's one neural path. Keep reworking it. Absolutely. And eventually discipline becomes easy because you realize, oh, that's where I have to be anyway. Yes. yes. So it's you got the it right. actual neurological life hack for a happy life. Excellent. You got it right. You said it perfectly. <laughs> I think that's what Gaur Gopal Das said about the core message of the Bhagavad Gita as well. Uh -huh. He said that life is full of ups and downs, uh -huh. but your sense of purpose will get you through. Absolutely. Correct. Perfect. So what I'm talking about, having a definite chief aim in life, sense of purpose, but I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to structure it more finitely. Sure. You know, just saying have a purpose is very generalized. Mm. And today's generation, like what purpose? I mean, you know, but if it is definite, it could be anything. It could be trying to save the white ho horned rhinoceros in some African, it may be that, you know, <laughs> sure. uh, it may be trying to find a cure for cancer. It may be work. It may be anything, you know, okay. uh, but it's got to mean something to you okay. because then your higher brain takes charge. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this. It's the artist clips.